know our math work is around measurement, but I did have a number book that I wanted to read a little bit of today. It's called Odds and Evens. And I have talked about odds and even numbers before when we count, skip counting, especially when we do counting by twos. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those are the even numbers. We count by odd numbers. We still skip counting, but they sound like this. People often don't count on these and skip counting. 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 29. There's still a difference in 2 between the numbers 1, 2, 2, 3. There's still a difference of 2, but people count less on odd numbers than they do even numbers. So I thought it would be good practice for us to just pay attention to them. It's called A Numbers Book, Odds and Evens, by Heidi Gunnell, I think is how her name is pronounced. Odds and Evens, by Heidi Gunnell. A one-horse town. And what she's going to use is to use um, phrases that are sometimes called idioms, where words that we hear meaning one thing, when they're used together, they can mean something else. A one-horse town is a way for describing a small town or a small community. A one-horse town. And there's one horse in the town. Two in the bush is another idiom. Two in the bush, <clears throat> there's two birds right here, is a way of saying that you're holding something back and you know you've got them in case you need them later. Two in the bush. Three blind mice. You heard that rhyme before. Three blind mice. Mm -hmm -hmm. Except these mice have blindfolds on and are playing a kind of find the cheese. I bet they have to find it by smelling instead of looking. A four-leaf clover. Seen and heard those before, right? Those clovers are all three leaves, and here is a four-leaf clover. The five senses. Can you name the five senses? Good. Seeing, hearing, touching, Tasting, touch, taste, feeling, six of one and half dozen of the other. There's another kind of measurement idiom. Smelling. My brain went on hold there for the senses. Ah, seventh heaven. That's another phrase when people talk about something that's really excellent, super top-notch, extra-duper, super, super. Seventh heaven. Behind the eight ball is another idiom. It means they're kind of stuck in a place that can be problematic or uncomfortable. Behind the eight ball. It means a lot of things are going wrong right now or a lot of worries. A cat has nine lives. People talk about that, cats being so... Agile and they can fall from high places and land on their feet. A cat has nine lives. It's a way of saying something keeps coming back, even though when it seems like it should be finished. Ten-gallon hat, the type of tall hats that cowboys wear, especially associated with Texas. The eleventh hour, it's kind of a witch picture there, uh, that means close to the end of something, the eleventh hour. The clock strikes 12. That refers to time when the clock strikes 12, but also means it's getting close to the end. The clock strikes 12 means something could be over. A little bit like Cinderella's story of the clock strikes 12 and she has to hurry home. A baker's dozen. Uh, that's a food service term.
baker's dozen means 12, dozen means 12, a baker's dozen means 13. Sometimes, um, it used to be, uh, it occasionally happens now where if you buy something at 12, like 12 rolls or 12 bagels, the store or the baker will throw in one more without charging you, and then that's called a baker's dozen. It's like an extra treat for being a good customer and buying a lot. Okay, odds and evens.